This is part three of section 1.5. We've just gone through the process of completing the square and now we're going to work some problems. So we're gonna solve this using completing the square. I have x squared plus six x is equal to negative eight. Our first step is to divide everything by a and a is the number of x in front of x squared. That's a one, divide everything by one, we're done, okay? Our next step is to get the constant on the side alone, and it's already there for us. So our first two steps are done. Now our next step is to find the magic number, which means I need to take the number in front of x, which is a six, divide it by two, that gives me a three, and then we take this answer and we square it. So my magic number is nine. You're going to have some problems where they ask you just to find what number is added to both sides. This is what you would type in, just nine. Our next step is to actually add it to both sides. So that gives me x squared plus six x plus nine is equal to negative eight plus nine. If we've done this correctly, we should have a perfect square trinomial right here. And if you want to check that, you take the square root of this, which would be x, you take the square root of this, which would be three. If you multiply these two together and then double it, do you get six x? Yes, okay. Perfect square trinomials always factor with the square root of this, which is x. Whatever this sign is here goes right here. And then the square root of nine is three and it goes here and that's overall squared. Okay, and this is going to equal one. Now this should look like a problem like we were working in the last part where we have something squared equal to a number. Now we can just use the square root property, take the square root of both sides, putting a plus or minus over here. So we get x plus three is equal to plus or minus, the square root of one is one, okay? Now I want x by itself. Technically I have two equations here. I have x plus three equals one. I have x plus three equals negative one. I suggest that you don't split it up until you've done as much of the algebra as you can. Now I can subtract three to both from both sides and I get x equals negative three plus or minus one. Now all of the, the algebra is done. We just need to do the arithmetic. I have either x equals negative three minus one or I have x equals negative three plus one. So x is negative four or x is negative two. And you write your answers in a set. Okay, so let's complete the square on x squared plus six x minus five is equal to zero, okay? Our first step is to divide everything by a. Well, a is a one, so we don't have to worry about anything. Our next step is to move the five over here so that we have a constant alone. So I have x squared plus six x. Now what I normally do when I have to move this over is I'll leave myself a blank. And the reason I do that is because our next step is going to be to add the magic number. So it just saves a recopying step because I, I've left myself place a place to write down that magic number. Okay, so let's calculate that magic number. We take the number in front of x, which is six. We divide it by two, which is three. And then we take that and we square it and we get nine. So we are going to add nine to both sides. Okay, now this is a perfect square trinomial and it happens to be the same one we just factored up here. And it's, square, it's the square root of x squared, which is x. That's a plus, this is a plus. The square root of nine is three squared and that's going to equal to 14. Now we have square root property. Take the square root of both sides, remembering to put a plus or minus over here. We'd simplify the square root of 14 if we could. 14 is just two times seven. It doesn't simplify at all. So the square root of this is x plus three. 
and this is equal to plus or minus the square root of 14. Now move the 3 over to the right, so I'm subtracting 3 from both sides, and I get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. So your two answers are negative 3 minus the square root of 14 and negative 3 plus the square root of 14. Okay, so let's work a couple more or one more at least. Okay, so I have 2x squared minus 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. So our first step is to divide everything by a. So I'm going to divide absolutely everything by a 2. And technically that does include dividing that 0 by 2. So that gives us x squared minus 2x minus 1 half is equal to 0. Our next step is to get the constant over here. So I'm going to add 1 half to both sides. I have x squared minus 2x, I'm leaving myself a space to add in that magic number, is equal to 1 half. So let's find that magic number. I need to take the number in front of my x, which is a 2, divide it by 2, which gives me a 1, and then I take that 1 and I square it, which gives me 1. So my magic number is 1. I'm going to add that to both sides. Okay. So right here, this factors as the square root of x squared is x. That's a minus, so this is a minus. The square root of 1 is 1. And that's squared. Is equal to, if you get a common denominator right here, that's going to be 3 halves. Okay, so we are ready for the square root property. Go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Remember the plus or minus. Okay, this is x minus 1 is equal to. Now we're going to have to do some simplification on the square root of 3 halves. They want your answers to be uh, uh, rationalized. They want your denominators to be rationalized. So right now what I have is this. Now I've got the plus or minus. I'm, one, I'm just going to worry about doing one of them and the answer over here is going to have the plus or minus on it. So I'll go ahead and write in the plus or minus right here so I don't have to worry about it anymore. One of the properties of square roots is that you can take the square root of the top of a fraction over the square root of the bottom of a fraction. So we can split it up like that. Now we're not supposed to have a radical in the denominator, so I'm going to rationalize this by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 2. And you can multiply underneath a radical as long as the index is the same. So this is the square root of 6 over, this would be the square root of 4, which is 2. So the square root of 3 halves is better written as plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. Okay, now I need to add 1 to both sides, and what I have is x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. Now we need a common denominator, so I'm going to rewrite 1 as 2 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. Now we have a common denominator, so we can combine these into one answer. And we get 2 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. So now you write down your two answers. I have 2 minus the square root of 6 over 2, and I have 2 plus the square root of 6 over 2. Okay, now as I mentioned earlier, nobody really likes the um, completing the square, but it is absolutely necessary. And you may be wondering if we have a quicker way in general to get these problems done, and we do. 
So in the next part, we'll talk about the quadratic formula.